So we're talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. Now we're going to talk about parallel lines for a while and then we'll jump into the perpendicular ones. Parallel lines, a very simple idea. I've got two lines here that are parallel. That means that they will never intersect and it also means that they have the same gradient. Now I could spend a bunch of time proving to you that they have the same gradient, but you can definitely see that they have the same slope. I'll also say that this angle here is equal to this angle here. And you know the definition of gradient is m equals tan theta, or at least one of them. So these must have the same gradient because they make the same angle with the x-axis. So a quick example question, Prove y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 2x minus 5 are parallel. We can see that the gradients are same. So we can say both have m equals 2, therefore parallel. Simple. Now this is essentially the same question. You just need to work harder to get to the answer. So we have two equations. We want to prove that they're parallel. Let's rearrange them both so that y is by itself. So uh, 3y equals um, negative 9x plus 12. So I've just made, taken the 9x over to here. And then divide both sides by 3. y equals negative 9x plus 12 all over 3. I can divide both of those by 3. So I get uh, negative 9 divided by 3, which is uh, negative 3x, and 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So y equals 4, because I've divided that by 3 as well. All right, so I have a gradient of negative 3. If the gradient of that is negative 3, then I'll know they're both parallel. Multiply both sides by 2. y plus 3x equals um, negative 2. And... Uh, move this 3x over to here or subtract 3x from both sides y minus 3x minus 2 I can see a gradient of negative 3 so I can say m equals negative 3 here m equals negative 3 here therefore they are both parallel done a very different style of question here but we've got the same idea we're talking about parallel lines find the equation of a line that is parallel to y equals 3x plus 2 and passes through the point 2, 1. Okay, we want to find the equation of a line. We know all lines are y equals mx plus c. Uh, we know that it's going to be parallel to this, which means that it's going to have the same gradient as this. So we know that it's y equals 3x plus c. We don't know the c value, but we know it passes through point 2, 1. So we can sub point to 1 into this equation for x and y. Remember, this is x and this is y. So 1 equals 3 times 2 plus c. c equals 1 minus 6, minus 6 from both sides, uh, which is negative 5. So c is negative 5, and therefore my final answer to this is y equals 3x minus 5. Answer. This line is parallel to this line and will also pass through this point right here. And now it's time to talk about perpendicular lines, which have a slightly different relationship, a slightly more complicated relationship, but we'll be fine. Here is a line. A perpendicular line makes a 90 degree angle with that line right there. So these two lines are perpendicular. There's a right angle there. So first of all, let's talk about what the relationship is between these two gradients. Let's look at a gradient of our first line here. We'll just call it like line A. So I've drawn a little triangle here for our gradient, rise over run. And I'm going to say that this is one across and two up. One across for every two up. Now I'm going to draw a similar triangle for this one here. Okay. And this one here is two across and one up. You can see these triangles, it's not quite to scale, but you can see these triangles here because of the way that perpendicular lines are, we're gonna end up with our rise over runs switching places. Not only are those rise over runs gonna switch places, but one of our lines is always gonna have a positive gradient and the other one's always gonna have a negative gradient. One's gonna be positive, one's going to be negative. So swapped 
swap drives over runs, and the sign also changes. Negatives become positives, and positives become negatives. Now there is a more rigorous proof of this where I talk about congruent triangles and things like that. And if you see me in the street, ask me about it and I'll draw it on a piece of paper, but this will do for now. So perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal gradients. The best way to do this is to show you a few examples super fast. So these are my four examples. Let's find lines with perpendicular gradients, or at least let's just find the gradients of perpendicular lines. So if there is a line y equals three on two x plus five, a line with a perpendicular gradient will be the negative equals negative reciprocal, flip the fraction, negative two on three. Let's look at this one. The gradient of a line that is perpendicular to that line is the negative, now this one's negative already, so we swap the sign now, it's going to be positive, reciprocal, five on seven. This one here, again, this one's positive, so this one is going to be negative. And the reciprocal of three, three is really three on one in disguise. So the reciprocal of three on one is one on three. And finally, this one down here, we have negative 0 0.5. Again, that's negative 0 0.5 on one in disguise. So we can write this as positive one on 0 0.5 and 1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2. All right, so that's how you find perpendicular gradients. It's called the negative reciprocal, the negative reciprocal. Another way to say the same thing is this. Gradient 1, m1 times gradient 2, gradient 2 equals negative 1. m1 times m2 equals negative 1. That's just another way of saying that the perpendicular line will be the reciprocal of the other line. We can see why just by looking at one of these examples. If this is m1, 3 over 2, and this is m2, the gradient of the other one, negative 2 over 3, that will be equal to 2. 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. 2 times 3, which is 6. Negative 6 over 6 is negative 1. So this is true for all perpendicular lines negative reciprocals, but also true that m1 times m2, the two gradients will multiply together, will always equal negative one. So if I want to prove that these two are perpendicular, I need to show that their gradients are negative reciprocals of each other. The gradient of this one is three. The gradient of this one, have to do a little more work, six y equals negative two x plus 12. Divide both sides by six, y equals negative 2x plus 12 over 6. And simplifying that, negative 2 divided by 6 is a negative 1 third x, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. All right, so I get y is equal to negative 1 third, positive 3. They're negative reciprocals of each other. It's probably manners to use that other formula as well. Uh, m1 times m2 equals negative 1, and sub in both of those and show that it works. 3 times negative 1 third equals negative 1, and 3 times negative 3rd equals negative 1. Yes, that is true, finished, proven, perpendicular. And now that I know all of that, I can do a question that looks a bit like this. Determine the equation of a line that passes through this point and is perpendicular to this equation. So I need to know the gradient of that equation because if I know the gradient of that equation, I can determine the gradient of a line that is perpendicular to it. So uh, y equals x plus one, that's a rearrangement of that. The gradient of this is one, even though we don't write it there. So m equals one, equals one which means that the perpendicular line, therefore we'll call this line two, or the line that we're trying to find, will have a negative reciprocal gradient. Now that's one over one. So the negative reciprocal of one over one is negative one. Line two has a gradient, M2 equals negative one. All right, so now I know the equation of line two is Y equals negative X plus C. 
I also know that it passes through point 63, which of course means we can sub the point 63 into this equation for x and y. So subbing 3 in for y, 3 equals negative 6 plus c. Move this over this side, add 6 to both sides, we get 9 equals c. We are really finished here because therefore the equation of a line that is perpendicular to this line is y equals negative x plus 9. All right, we've covered a lot of ground there. That is parallel and perpendicular lines.